Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F122 esports video. Today is round number four yeah. around Austria. And this is event two. As you guys might know, every F1 esports event has three races. So this is the second one. First one uh, of event two. And we are racing around Austria. Heading out for Q1 uh, for what I hope will be our first and only qualifying lap. Uh, in Q1, as you guys might know, you only get five sets of tires for Q1, 2 and 3 and that basically means you want two new sets for Q3 and two new sets for Q2 and in the hope you can do Q1 with a single set of tires however, that's easier said than done, pressure is always on especially in Q1, the track is very slippery in Q1 um, which makes it even harder to hook up a lap but we're gonna try and do that here today for um, for event two. We are a little bit far behind in the championship standings. Uh, Lucas Blakely won the first two races and then in Silverstone race three he finished in P3. Which basically means he has 65 points. While we only have 28 if I remember correctly. Uh, I think we finished fifth in Silverstone, second in Bahrain and zero points in Imola, so we've got uh, we've got some work to do. We're almost 40 points behind, and um, we're gonna have to um, win this race, basically, uh, or at least a few races um, that are coming up. If anything, we need to mainly just finish out of Lucas if we wanna stay in this championship fight. Anyway, first lap in Q1, into turn one we go, fifth gear, and you just need to carry as much speed as possible without ruining the exit uh, minimum speed is so crucial in turn one but the exit speed as well because it's a big straight hairpin coming up important to break late and get once again a very good exit a little bit of a wiggle on that exit uh, as Barry Borman goes to P1 uh, momentarily and downhill right hander coming up easy to lock up the right front always a little bit under on entry as it's a downhill corner so rotation is crucial around there and into a very fast left and their minimum speed and entry speed are so important through there and you can see we're fighting the car on the exit as we head into the final sector of this qualifying lap very fast right and they're coming up sixth gear and into the final corner always very hard to get the front to bite in time to carry as much speed as possible and it's p3 for now with a 104 point 092 Freddy comes across the line and goes fastest we did not have to go out again for the first time I think so um, on in this esports season that we save a set of tires for Q3 and now the next objective is to obviously make it into Q3 in the first place as this is our we're about to finish our first um, new set of tire run in Q2 Barry goes to P1 with a 103.790 and we do a 103.987, two tenths off. And a lot of people still have to finish their laps. So that was not a good lap. I had a big moment on the exit, of course. And by the time everyone finished the lap, we're down in P10. But we have one more chance. This is where it all counts. This is where we have to hook it up if we want to make it into Q3. Turn one. A uh, little, bit, little bit slow. You can see the refs dropped very low. And I hit a little bit of the inside curb. Ideally, he don't want that. And that's why he lost 100 to our uh, previous lap. And we've got some time to make up if we want to make it into Q3 here. And again, that hairpin was not great. Even more time lost now. We're 300 down. And we're almost all the way through the lap. So we've got, uh, we've got a job to do here. We've got a job on our hands. And the pressure is starting to add on. 200s gain back in that right hander. But we're still 100 down, and we have to improve if we want to make it into this Q3 session. And now we just need to keep finding time every single corner. We are 300s up now, but we're definitely going to have to improve more if we want to make it into Q3 here. We managed to nail the apex a lot more than on the previous lap, and now all we need to do is not get a big snap of oversteer in the exit, which we managed to do. 700s up across the line, and it's P7 for now. And now all we have to do is wait and see what everyone else is doing it wasn't a great lap and as you can see there we've dropped to p8 already Alvaro Caraton in p10 Marcel Kiefer 
puts us down in P9. And as you can hear my engineer say, it's not looking very good right now. With still around three people having to cross the line. Luckily for us, John Evans and David Tanitsa have dropped behind us. Our teammate is going to come across the line and he will go to P11. And now it's a waiting game for Patrick Sipos to cross the line. And he is invalidated. Or actually, he's already done his lap. And by the skin of our teeth, we get into Q3 by four hundredths of a second. And that was a little bit too tight for comfort. We were 1.8 tenths slower than Freddy Rasmussen. And if we want to get anywhere near um, the top three, we're going to have to do a lot of a better job. Uh, then uh, that lap as it was just not fast enough um, Yeah, we're gonna have to um, nail it a lot more on this first lap of Q3. We've got two new sets of tires uh, Which is uh, surprising considering our pace um, So far we were too slow in Q1 and 2. We just hooked up our laps more or less and no big mistakes and uh, we are 400s up on Simon Weigang in the first qualifying lap of Q3 so far. Now, with those two new sets of tires, that gives us the opportunity to um, set a solid banker and then really push it to the limit on the last one. As uh, Track Evolution is not crazy back around here anyway, um, you basically got two solid chances of putting it on pole. Um, however, that's easier said than done. Uh, 2.7 tens up on Simon going into the final sector and <laughs> These last two corners are so so difficult. You can invalidate them um, On both of them on the exit you can see we're pushing it so far on the wide line and the edge of the tire is just still Leaning on that wide line and that's why it's not invalidating. It's a 103.798. That's a lot more like it uh, 900 of Thomas Ronhaar and now in this final lap, you can see we're P4 actually, so that was a, a pretty decent banker. Um, but a lot of people probably did not have a new set of tires. And they are definitely going to improve on this last lap. New set of tires once again, into turn 1 we go. A little bit more entry speed, exit was not great as the front was just not quite biting into the asphalt. And that's something I've been struggling on a lot with this game. Entry and sir, exit over there. And we've got the same in the hairpin again. I just got a little bit more understeer on the second lap so far. And that's costing us lap time. Especially as the back end snapped away on the exit. Um, sometimes when you get entry understeer, it tends to aggressively snap to oversteer. As the fronts bite up very late into the corner. Almost 110 down now. And we need to gain a lot of time if we want to get anywhere near the top three. And that's why I'm pushing very, very hard in the rear. Snaps away on the exit. And that's just the same I had earlier on in the lap. Entry understeer, which transfers to exit oversteer very, very fast. And that is our hopes of our first top five qualifying um, this year gone. Actually, I'm not sure where I qualified in Bahrain. Might actually have been top five, but top three then. Um, and we're down in P9. Uh, just ahead of Marcel Kiefer by four thousandths of a second and fifteen thousandths behind Brendan Lee and unfortunately uh, We were just not fast enough because my PB was slower than the top three So uh, even if we do did hook it up, then we would have still not been in the top three <laughs> Simple as that on to the race we go now then and as you can see it's raining and that is music to our ears uh, it will dry up later in this race, which again gives the opportunity to do something yeah, um, and um, make some moves. So on to the race we go now then, starting behind Brendan Lee and Lucas Blakely, our championship leader, right ahead of us. It's going to be five red lights and away we go for round four of the F1 Esports series. Not a great start, not a terrible start. Into turn one we go, down the inside of Brendan Lee. He squeezes us a little bit, a little bit of a tap. And we both managed to keep it pointing in the right direction. John Evans right behind us. I'm not sure what has happened to Marcel Kiefer. who are starting right behind us. Um, but um, he has dropped down the field a little bit. Brendan covers the inside as we struggle for traction out of the hairpin. So does Brendan. And we managed to stay right on his heels. And now... 
All we have to do is make up track position. We always hope, of course, that we've got a lot of wet pace. But even if you do have a lot of wet pace, it's just so hard to overtake people in wet conditions on the game because you don't have DRS and because you don't have DRS you can see Brendan is struggling a lot actually um, and again on the exit he's a, he has a big tank slapper we try to get a better exit and can we maybe go around the outside into this next right hander I think better of it we still have 35 laps to go um, and enough time to overtake him if we truly are faster so we gotta bide our patience here and not get damage or um, spin out early on or get into incidents in the first place so again through turn one we carried so much more speed than Brandon and it looks like we've got a lot of pace on our hands into turn three we go in the slipstream Brandon goes defensive we go around the outside we break much much later into the hairpin we manage to keep it on the island and around the outside into p8 we go um, and it looks like we've got a lot of pace at this point in the race and even though our start was not great you can see actually Nicolas Longe goes very very deep in that right hander loses a position and a lot of time but um, yeah even though we had a not a great start it looks like we've got a lot of pace right here right now um, and we need to try and get past Simon at some point as well if we uh, manage to keep this pace up compared to everyone else. I'm not sure if we've got a better wet setup on. Um, as if I remember correctly, we didn't went, I think, even a wet setup. We might have actually um, just okay. stuck to our uh, dry setup. But um, yeah, you never know. Setups are different and some might work better in the wet. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if it's setup or down to driving. Um, if it is set up, then we will keep gaining time over the next few laps. If it was just purely driving, it might have come down to just more confidence early on. And uh, until lap 14 we go now. Uh, nothing happened as I was just stuck behind Simon. I had to save some fuel as well because it started drying up a little bit. Sector one. It's it started drying up a lot earlier than I expected. So I had to do some lift and coast. And because I was stuck behind Simon anyway, um, I felt like it was better to do the lift and coast now so we can um, fight harder when it starts drying up. Uh, yeah, we think it's um, because yeah, I, I did try a solid three to four laps trying purple to pass Simon. Um, and as you can hear my engineer say, a purple sector three for Copy. the Alpine who is on slicks. And that means that we're going to be boxing this lap for a set of slicks. However, the question is, Simon goes very, very deep. I'm not sure if he was planning to stay out another lap and decide it's very late to uh, box or if he, um, you know, just missed uh, the corner. Anyway, on to a new set of hearts we go. And the decisions might be very mixed here. Some people might be going for mediums. Some people might be going for hearts. Mediums should be a lot faster initially because of the drying up track. As we've actually over managed to overtake. Simon in the box, which should absolutely not be possible. However, we have just done it and up to uh, a net P7 we go, which is very lucky. It should not be happening, but it did happen and very unlucky for Simon. Has he been passed by Brendan now as well, who's gone on to mediums. Lucas goes very, very deep into the hairpin and loses a position in one of the most crucial laps of the race. As a lot of people are on their in lap still, you can see a Red Bull, a Mercedes, our teammate, and Barry Bormand are on their in-laps. And this is such a crucial lap because the hearts are not up to temperature yet. The intermediates are not going to be terrible on this in-lap. And we, we are fighting most likely Barry for track position here. So uh, might be costing Lucas crucially uh, at this point in the race. Um, intermediates. As you can hear, my engineer said Danny will be going to mediums. We've decided to go for hearts. Danny was slightly outside of the point, so he's going to risk it. Um, mediums, as I said, should be should be faster earlier on. However, I want to have the pace late on around here, as um, the rest of the grid has boxed for a set of slicks. Um, I'm just not using any ERS just yet. Brendan is pushing really hard on those mediums. Of course, he needs to make ground early on. As, um, as you can see there, Barry Bormand 
uh, has come out right ahead of his teammate Lucas Blakely. He moves out of the way. Longay managed to pass uh, Barry straight away. Um, so um, I'm not sure actually where Barry qualified, but uh, I'm quite sure it was quite far ahead of us. And he he still has to warm up his tires. The pain we have gone through earlier on, he has to go through now. And he has lost a lot of time warming up these tires and staying out that extra lap on those intermediates. And the question is now, can we pass him somewhere on the next few straights? Because he is flashing, so he's struggling with battery as well. He will just about get DRS from his teammate, um, if I'm correct. And actually he won't, he won't get DRS. But um, he will get it on the next straight, as I think his teammate might have slowed down a little bit to make sure he was getting DRS. However, we've got more battery and we're gonna use it right now to go on the attack on Barry Bromand, one of our championship rivals as well. We go down the inside into the next right-hander. He squeezes a little bit on the inside. We keep or give him enough space on the exit. And with more tire temperature, we manage to get up to P6. Next up is Lucas Blakely as Barry is to defend once again against Brendan Lee, two-time F1 Esports World Champion as well. The first F1 Esports Champion actually as well. And now we need to try and get back into that DRS as fast as we can. Um, Lucas has been pushing quite a lot because he is very close to Nicolas Longe. And we need to make sure that we're gonna get DRS hey, in the next few laps. We've drained our battery completely. I think Brendan might have done the same as he had to pass Simon and uh, Barry as well. So um, as we come across the line, it's gonna be the fastest lap of the race with a 106.435. And Luckily, we have managed to stay in the DRS. Lucas is still Longy, pushing very Longy hard. on 70% ERS. Um, and as you can imagine, he's a long gain on 70% ERS, which means that um, he has about 70% more than us. And that means we we are going to have to nail the next few laps and hope they don't pull out of, out of our DRS, um, basically. Anyway, absolutely nothing happened. We managed to recharge our battery. And... Um, with two laps to go, we're gonna look at using it. Longe is on a set of mediums, everyone else on the hards, and because he's on the mediums, they are dropping off, they are wearing out faster, um, and he is struggling now. As you can see, Josh Idobu, which just jumped up to P3, is flashing, which means his battery is under 10%. Same for Nicolas Longe, uh, who is struggling on the set of mediums, or teammate, however is up to p8 with the fast lap as well which usually gets um taken away just like we had last round however the top two is gone we are fighting for p3 still here and we've got a very full battery which we are yet ready to use lucas as a big tank slapper we decide to go for the switchback on the next right and we get a better run up the hill Longe, uh, Lucas gets the slipstream from Nicolas Longe. We decide to go all the way around the outside and up to P5 we go. However, it's not quite over yet. We're looking to fight to be fighting for a podium position here on the last lap. Nicolas is flashing. We still got 40% battery into turn one we go. I'm not sure if we hit him there. However, Nicolas decides to go off track. We get DRS. Nicolas gets it as well. However, we got a lot more battery remaining. And... Now we need to try and get Josh Ido. We can see we're breaking so much later. We're still going to get DRS on the next straight. You can see Josh is still flashing. We got 20% ERS remaining. Can we go for a move in the next right hand? We're fighting for a podium position here. Maybe somewhere in the next few corners. Uh, Josh will have to make a mistake because we don't have any battery left. As you can see, he runs wide into the next left-hander. He's feeling the pressure. We've closed about a one-second gap just on this lap alone. But our battery is dead. And unless Josh makes a mistake in the final two corners, it's not going to be enough. However, we started P9 and managed to climb up to P4. It's been a great race, nonetheless. And yeah, Nicolas Longe comes home in p5 1.7 seconds behind us lucas um comes home in p6 so we gain a few points back on lucas blakely um on the on the incident in turn one with nicolas um 
I'm not sure if we hit him. However, he was struggling a lot on tires as well. Um, the stewards looked at it. They said I didn't hit him. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure. It was very close. I think I actually might have hit him. However, um, as I said, Nicolas was struggling on tires. So they decided it was not penalty worthy. I think it was very much on the limit, if not slightly over it. Um, I think we might have gotten a, a, a warning for it. Um, nonetheless, we would have got past him anyway, but I agree that it was um, slightly over the limits probably. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy the video and see you guys next time. Ciao.